Ah, uh, Las Vegas. City of lights, fun, excitement. You can go there, waste thousands of dollars trying to make it rich and come back home broke and only have the memory of lights. Or you can get a new Kraken, have awesome lights with you all the time, and save hundreds of dollars. The choice is pretty easy to me. Hey guys, Hardware Hound here. I am back with a review of the NCXT Kraken X62 CPU cooler. So this bad boy is NCXT's latest revision of the Kraken, and you know a company is doing a product right when they only have two revisions of their original product. And so the Kraken is a perfect example of this. So let's talk about a quick little overview of what we've got going on. Now first off, this is a closed loop cooler. NZXT isn't trying to do all the fancy stuff where you can do add in and opening up the loops and stuff. And for people who like to keep their cooling simple, that is great. Of course, we've got a basically an Acetec design here. So we got the copper plate that has a pre-included swath, swath of thermal paste on it. And then we have an aluminum radiator, pretty typical of your closed loop units. Um, some nice things that the Kraken are doing that the Kraken is doing on this one that, that helps it stand out a little bit better. So we've got the braided hoses, which looks nice. You know, I like that better than the kind of rigid look that you see on some of the other ones. The really cool thing that NZXT decided to add to this thing is a mirrored finish, an infinity mirror on the top of the pump head. And so that thing lights up with full RGB glory and it looks fantastic. But of course, no cooler is going to measure up if it doesn't have good cooling performance. But before we do, in, do anything with the cooling performance, we're going to take a quick look at just how to install this unit. We're going to look at the cam software, then we'll get to the performance, and then we'll finish off with an award. All right, let's talk about the insulation on this guy first. Um, if you've had any experience with any of the Acetec units from NZXT or Corsair, then things are going to seem very similar. So we're going to talk about how this guy worked on an AM3 Plus socket since I am using uh, AMD board with this review. So the first thing that you probably want to do is go ahead and install the radiator. Now in this case I've still got the S340 Elite case. So the radiator just goes right here in the front for this case in order to put a 240mm radiator. Fits nicely. Of course NZXT designs their cases to handle their coolers. So I didn't have any issues there. All you have to do is put your fans in front in this case. I put my fans so that they're blowing through the radiator. Um, usually like that for performance levels, but it does make it a little bit harder to clean dust. But you got some extra long screws. You screw it in through the case mount, done. Radiator's on there, not too difficult. Um, after that, you gotta go ahead and put the pump block on. Now, one of the things I really love about the Aztec design is the fact that they use AMD's included bracket with with the install. So all you have to do is you've got a couple of plastic clips on the top and the bottom. You gotta take those off first, but then you leave the metal bracket in there. And so there's a couple, there's four stands that screw into that bracket. And they screw in, but they'll keep the bracket just a little bit loose. They don't screw in tight against your motherboard, so you don't have to worry about damage or anything like that. So you screw those four things in, and once you have them screwed in, then the pump unit or the bracket's going to stay in place. You don't have to worry about falling out the back. You don't have to do any funny things where you have to hold it with one hand or, you know, I've typically used tape to hold it in while I'm installing when I don't have anything else to hold it. So once you do that, then all you have to do is you take the pump block and there's going to be the Intel bracket already, already uh, mounted onto that. You just have to click it over a little bit and then that bracket slides off. Put the AMD on, click it on, and then the whole unit will just slide right over top of the mounts. And then you've got four nice big nuts that are really easy to just hand tighten down. And if you don't feel like you've gotten it quite tight enough, then you can just grab a screwdriver and tighten it down the rest of the way to make sure it's got good contact. Nice four points of, of tightening to make sure you've got good even pressure. Very great design. Now, after that, you've got to do all the cables. And this is where things get 
a little bit more complicated than your average cooler anymore. So first off, NZXT is con controlling their fans on their cooler through an integrated fan controlling system built into this pump head. So with that in mind, you got a few more connections to make. So one of the things I liked about it is the way they designed the pump. You can have everything unplugged off of it when you're installing it. And I think that makes things a little easier not having those cables dangling, dangling around. So all you have to do is you've got one connector that is just a USB connector and it plugs into kind of, kind of off to the side on the top there. Take that cable, run it around, and it'll plug into one of your USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard. That's so that the drivers and cam can read and understand that you got this pump plugged in. The other connector is the connector for the power that goes to the pump, to the SATA, to the fans, and everything. And it's a nice long kind of rectangular connector, and it just pushes right into the top. Now, I found it wasn't too hard to squeeze that guy in there after I had the pump installed, but it can be a little difficult. So if you want to save yourself a little hassle and have better view of it, then you might want to plug that thing in before you cinch the pump down, but that's kind of a preference thing. I prefer to cinch the pump down first. Once you plug that bad boy down, you'll have a SATA connector that you need to connect to one of your SATA connectors off of your power supply. You're going to have a, quite a few fan slots, but if you're only using the included fans, you only need two of them. Plug your fans into there. And then there is one little three pin fan connector that helps monitor the, the speed of the pump. And if you have a motherboard that's really picky about not having your CPU fan plugged in, it'll take away those errors for you and you don't have to try to find it in the BIOS and say, hey, ignore this. I know that my pump and my cooling is working on my CPU. Once you got all that stuff set up, then you can install the cam drivers and NZXT pretty much takes care of it self the rest of the way. So. All in all, install process is excellent. I love it. Um, they've really made these things very simple, and that is one of the biggest things that make these all-in-one closed-loop coolers great, is that they are simple. They're very easy to dive into if you're scared about liquid and you're scared about the install process. They're so easy, a caveman can do it. No offense, caveman. All right, so you got this baby installed, you got everything rolling, now you've got to use software to control it. Unlike other systems where they might use your fan headers and you can use your BIOS controls, this one you got to use CAM to control the speed of the pump and the speed of the fans, unless you, of course, plug the fans into your motherboard. But you probably aren't going to want to do that if you've got this unit. Now, some people are a little hesitant about third-party software, and I am one of those people. In fact, a lot of times software for manufacturers are buggy at best. In fact, um, probably one of the worst one of the worst manufacturers I've had in times past is Asus. Man, their software can just be so funky at times. Um, but you know, regardless of how Asus is now, um, the important thing is how CAM does. So NZXT is using CAM. Now, CAM is, is, is pretty good software overall, but when I first dove into CAM when they were first releasing it, I noticed they had a few weird issues. There was times where I had trouble with the upgrades. Um, there was a couple of times where it just seemed like I had trouble refining my hardware. And some of that I think is a combination of AMD chipsets being old and not as well supported as some of the newer ones. That being said, CAM has done a lot, NZXT has done a lot, to in improve their CAM software and this latest iteration of their versions since the three some of the well, probably about two two versions ago has been flawless they have worked excellently I've not had any issues with them picking up my devices I've used some grid plus I've used the Kraken these things have been working so much better NZXT has done a great job of working out the bugs it just keeps getting better and better and with this particular unit, I didn't have any issues. I didn't have any issues with the install. I didn't have any issues discovering it. And I think that is a huge improvement. So once you get into CAM, you've got a lot of customizations. Now, of course, the biggest thing is you can customize your cooling performance. So if you prefer to have it very silent, you can set things to silent modes. If you want to have a little more performance, you can set up performance. If you just want it to go full blast, you can set it to 100%. Either way that works, you can set custom fan curves. All this you can do from CAM to customize your cooling experience, which is great. But the really fun part is the fact that you can control the LED lighting effects on the pump head. 
and you can customize the daylights out of them. You can either choose to make it do just a simple pattern, you can choose to have it fixed, you can decide if you don't want to have NZXT showing and you just want the rain, you can turn off the NZXT logo and just have the rain lit up. You can combine this to have different different colors to different waves of, of audio. You can have it do different colors to different degrees of temperature so that it gets to different colors. You can do what I've got going on and honestly I just love it because it looks great. I'm just using the default spectrum wave where it just goes in a nice circle and changes colors and I think it looks fantastic. So. The customization on their RGBs is the best I've ever seen. I mean, you can you can do just about whatever you want. And NZXT really owns the market there. So when you take the whole aesthetic look on this unit, I just it's hands down NZXT wins. And I think they're doing an amazing job. In fact, if there is one thing I would like to see them change on this unit, is I would almost prefer them to include their rain RGB fans. Um, on the actual radiator rather than just the airs. But the airs are designed for performance, so that's why they have these as radiator fans. So, minor preference, but then again, you can easily pick up some RGB fans and change and get the new air ones that have the RGB ring if you want to do that. So, we've gotten a really good solid unit so far. Our install process is great. Our software is great. It looks great. Now the final question is, is, does it have performance to match it? And if it does, then I think we're going to have a slam dunk on our hands. Alright guys, so let's talk about this performance. So, with this Kraken, I got to compare it to a couple different units. Um, in particular, I had a Cooler Master Sadon that uh, has Cougar fans that kind of, those Cougar fans are really great on radiators and bump the performance up a little bit. But it's only 240 millimeter rad versus this guy having a 280 millimeter rad. So I've got an FX6350 uh, processor here. It's overclocked to 4.5 gigs. In my experience, I've seen in, no difference in stock to overclocked performance that's worth mentioning. So I'm only going to measure overclocked performance. And idle temps, idle temps seem to be more reliant on the motherboards themselves and their power saving features than they do the chip. So overclocked, full blast. I have an Asus 970 Pro Gaming Aura motherboard to power this chip. So with a 1.45 V-Core, 4.5 GHz overclock on a 6350, the Cooler Master has a 46.5 degree key, uh, uh, core temperature on that, which is really good considering that's a fairly decent overclock on there. So with the Kraken, when I use the silent profile, we're running 50.5 degrees, and that's not too terribly bad compared to the Nepton, but we're a little bit higher. At the same time, there's like virtually no noise level. Once we get to the performance feature, we're at 49.2 degrees, and the performance is kind of basing it, but you can either base it off of the coolant temperature, or you can use something like your graphics card, or you can use a CPU. I chose to use a CPU measurement. Well, because the CPU wasn't getting that high, it never gets, the fans never get very loud, and the decibel level still stayed reasonably low. Here's the deal though, if I put those fans on full blast, I was able to drop that temperature down to 45.7 degrees, and that's where this unit starts pulling ahead. And that's a really good temperature. I mean, it's not a huge dif difference at this level, but the more you push those heat differences, the better that these larger radiators are going to start shining. And so since I only have a three core processor here, or a six core processor, and not crazy amounts of heat coming out of it, like some of the Intel chips, it's gonna have a little hard time showing a huge benefit, but it still showed it. And that's what's nice. Also, very hard to get as consistent a temperature as I'd like, because I don't have a super great controlled environment. You know, if I was a millionaire, I would build a really nice controlled environment. I am not a millionaire, if you haven't figured that out yet. But no, overall this is great. The one thing I really loved about this, and because I didn't have the Corsair unit on this chip, I couldn't fairly balance it out with this, but the Corsair unit was so much louder when I had the H110i that I was, that I was measuring out. So the fact that NZXT has kept this even at 100% speed, fairly quiet, is pretty good. But on performance mode, this thing never gets louder than just even read it doesn't even get into the uncomfortable zone in my opinion so I think overall the performance is pretty fantastic on this 
it's not going to be the best. And if you want just the top-notch performance, well, there's units that'll do that at the expense of a lot of noise. I'm kind of at a point, too, though, where that extra noise I don't think is worth it for the amount of extra cooling you get. Because a lot of times when you're doing a simple ratio overclock, you're not going to get any higher than what you get with a unit like this. So having something that looks great and sounds great as well is, to me, what makes it a winner more than just who can get the absolute highest number. Let's go ahead and wrap up this review and give this guy an award. Overall, this unit, I, there is nothing I can legitimately claim, complain about. I, don't, I could not find anything that I feel like is a problem. So with all that being said, we've got to look at the price of this thing. So I, don't, I haven't really seen a lot of availability on Newegg or Amazon yet. So the only place you can get this from is the NZXT website. And they're out of stock on the NZXT website, unfortunately. And the thing is, is for the X62 here, you're looking at $160. That's pretty high for any kind of liquid cooler. I mean, you can get a lot of your 280 millimeters for quite a bit cheaper than that now. So NZXT knows they've got a winner on their hand, and they're charging for it. That being said, it's out of stock, so people obviously are, are wanting it. And I can't blame them. The price it seems a little steep to me, but not so steep that I think is unfair. I do. I would say if you're not in a huge hurry, if you wait long enough, I think these prices will come down, especially as stock starts balancing out with demand. But they're not going to come down much. This is a great unit, and it's worth the money. If it was closer to like $140, I would say it's an absolute steal. But I would say $160 is fair. So the worst complaint I have for this unit is that it is fairly priced. That is not a complaint at all. So I don't think I have any choice. This is clearly a pure overclock editor's choice award. And in fact, if I was going to recommend a unit, I would ask one question. Do you want to expand the loop? And if you said no, then I'd say, well, just go for one of these. They're fantastic. They look great. They perform great. I think you'd be really happy with it. So anyway, I hope you like this review. I hope I covered the questions that you wanted answered when you checked this out. Like and subscribe to my channel. If uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel. If you like what I'm doing, I'll keep trying to bring you more, and I'll catch you next time.